Greetings, greetings, greetings to everyone out there in virtual reality. This is your host, Oba Omi, and this is your next episode of Oba Omi Says. First and foremost, like, comment, and subscribe, and ring the bell for post notifications so you can keep up with what's going on here at Oba Omi Says. Secondly, you guys, this is the last few days of the first quarter of the year, so if you would like to book a reading with me, to schedule a reading with me, rather, and to know your energy for the year, definitely give me some time, give me a call, and definitely go through any of my social medias, any of the links in my bio, in the description, or in my bio, to just go ahead and get in contact with me to book and schedule your reading so that you can be abreast of what's going on for the rest of the year. Thirdly, I would like to tell you guys, I am still planning on doing my station head, but I'm just having to re-navigate how that's about to work because of how station head works. You guys just continue to hold tight on my station head, but I definitely am about to start doing some programming over there. So make sure you all are looking out and seeing what's going on with my station head as well. So my station head is in the description. Go ahead and go to that link and follow it as well. And last but not least, there are chapters in the description. If you expand the description, you can see all the chapters of this episode and you can directly click on whichever parts interest you the most. Feel free to skip around if you can't listen to the whole podcast right now. Feel free to skip around and um, listen to the things that you're the most interested in and come back at a later time to listen to the rest. All right. But with all those things be- being said, we'll go ahead and get started. All right, guys. So up first, we have our pop culture and entertainment news featuring our celebrity news and our Billboard Hot 100s, what's going on on the Hot 100s U.S. charts, you guys. So, um, we got a couple of interesting little things here in this section. Dealing with the music and dealing with the um, celebrities and everything. So, let's go ahead and get straight into this segment and see what we got going on in the celebrity world before we get to the Billboard 100. So, first up on our celebrity news. Oscar's audience tops 15 million, exceeding last year. Television ratings for the Oscars rebounded somewhat from last year's record low, but the event clearly doesn't have the appeal to viewers it once had. Sunday ceremony reached an estimated of 15.36 million viewers, according to preliminary Nielsen company numbers released on Monday by ABC. A more detailed estimate is expected Tuesday, with elements like out-of-home viewing added. CODA won Best Picture in Sunday's ceremony, but all of the winners and losers were overshadowed by the Best Actor winner, Will Smith storming the stage to slap comic Chris Brown because of a joke made about Smith's wife, Jada Pinkett Smith. So, you guys, that's the Oscars for you. I did not watch the Oscars, wasn't interested, even with Beyonce and such people performing, I didn't, and I'm glad after I heard about all that. I was actually kind of upset with the general public that the next day, and even still to now, everybody started like basically circulating the clip of, you know, um, Chris Rock getting slapped by Will Smith. Somebody had texted me like that night and was like, did I just see what I thought I saw? And I was like... Well, I, what did you see? Because I didn't see any of it. So I, I, I can't tell you about if you saw what you saw, you saw. Like, I don't I don't know. So I don't know, you guys. I I heard the Oscars was still a snooze fest. I heard Beyonce's uh, performance was pretty good. Megan Thee Stallion's performance wasn't all that from what I heard. So I, I just don't know, you guys. Wasn't excited. Didn't watch it. Don't plan on watching anything from it. Sorry, you guys. I'm not into it. So, let me know, you guys, did I miss anything? I mean, were y'all excited about the slap and all that stuff? Or, like, what was your highlight for the Oscars? Let me know because I didn't see it. So, I can't even tell y'all what was going on with it. So, let me know what you all think about Oscar audience topping 15 million. What you all think about that in the comments. Up next, we have Remy Ma Talks Doja Cat genre blending music. She says, I don't think she's a rapper. 
Doja Cat, Cat is nominated for eight Grammys at this year's ceremony, two of which are in rap categories. So, and Remy Ma has some thoughts on Doja Cat's genre blending musical style. I don't think she's a rapper, Remy said during a recent interview with Drink Champs DJ EFN and Nori. Let's be clear with that. They put her in the rapper category. I don't think she's a rapper, but she makes dope records, and I think she's dope. The thought sparked some debate on Twitter with one fan writing, Remy Ma, come Remy Ma come from an era of traditional rap. There's nothing wrong with Doja Cat being from a pop rap being a pop rapper, but they shouldn't be grouped with real hip hop artists. I'm sorry, but Remy Ma saying Doja Cat not a rapper is wild to me because what the F is she? Why we putting rappers in one box? Another added to um, the former perspective. So, you know, people are upset about what Remy Ma says. Y'all need to leave Remy alone, you guys. Y'all know Remy just trying to say anything to keep her name in the, in just people talking about it. So, you know... It's just so much going on in the world of hip hop and everybody trying to label everybody and all this other stuff. It's just kind of getting crazy to me, you guys. But I mean, I, I, in all honesty, I can't say that I particularly disagree with Remy Ma, but you know, I really don't think any of it really matters because, you know, this music is this music. Probably in like a 200, 300 years, it's all just probably gonna be one genre of music from this age and just little subsets. And then whatever the music of that time will be what dominates the mass consciousness. So, it is what it is, you guys. So, what do y'all think? Do y'all think that Doja is actually a rapper? Do you think Remy Ma is out of line? What do you guys think about all this? Let me know what you think about this in the comments. And last but not least, more news on Doja Cat. Doja Cat says, everything is dead to me. Music is dead and appears to quit music, as she said. I'm a effing fool for ever thinking I was made for this, she tweeted. Doja Cat appeared ready to quit her music career on Thursday, March 24th, in a series of tweets in which the 26-year-old singer expressed her frustration, going so far as to change her Twitter name to the pointed handle to the pointed I quit. It's gone and I don't give a F anymore. I effing quit. I can't wait to effing disappear. And I don't need you to believe me anymore. Doja then wrote in the early morning hours of Friday. Everything is dead to me. Music is dead. I'm an effing fool for ever thinking I was made for this effing nightmare. Unfollow me. The tweet was directed at three people, including NBC Sports, Telemundo Sports Production Assistant Robert Rojas. So those are some of the people that they were directing it to. After Doja tweeted, I'm not sorry, in response to a tweet that called her public enemy number one, Rojas replied with Doja, you're not going to win this fight against the Par Paraguayans. So, yeah, y'all. So Doja is going through it right now. You know, it is what it is. I mean... I don't, I don't, I'm still trying to figure out how her and Megan Thee Stallion and all these people got popular. I'm so lost in the sauce and things have changed so much from when I was younger as to how people get famous and get, I don't, I don't know what it was. I guess it's because they're always on um, Instagram and Twitter and stuff and doing all that stuff. And I, I have no idea what the formula is anymore, you guys. I know some, I mean, everybody thinks Doja and all these artists, like, and no shade to none of the people on the charts. But the type of music that I run into on every genre is like 10 times more magnified than anything I've heard on the charts, period. Nobody on the charts does anything for me, for real, for real. I mean, of course, I like it for music of the age and things like that, just to be representative of those things. But, you know, I'm not a big, I'm not into a lot of these popular artists like that. Um, especially the older I get, um, I have way more refined musical taste. I'm a music historian personally, so I study a lot of different types of music. So I just think that's something to keep in mind, you know, sometimes that everybody won't be into your type of music. So, you know, but that doesn't really have any, a lot of people are into Doja, but kind of feel like they're being force fed Doja. 
and it's just interesting how things are going with her through all this so I don't know you guys like are y'all into it do y'all believe that what she's a lot of people saying she's bluffing anyway and none of that's true what do y'all think about this are y'all here for Doja quitting or are y'all wanting her to stay are you big fans of Doja Cat let me know what y'all think. Tell me if my assessment of all this is wrong. If I'm missing something about Doja Cat and all these other artists that are popular. Because I'm not, you know, I could honestly care less, to be honest, if any of them quit. So, that's just my personal opinion, you guys. But let me know what your opinion is in the comments. Alright, guys. So, the last section of our pop culture entertainment news we have the Billboard Hot 100 on the American charts. We're going to go over the top 10 and maybe talk about a few honorable mentions for the week. But we're going to go ahead and go over our top 10 on the U.S. Hot 100 chart. So up number one this week, we have Glass Animals again with Heat Waves. So Glass Animals has came back up and... I guess, like, I really gotta listen to this song, you guys. Is it like a summertime song or something? Like, I guess people are in the mood to dance and be merry and all these other things, so. But, um, and Heat Waves could be a slow song for all I know. I have no idea. But that's number one, you guys. This charts have been pretty stable in the top four because Kid Leroy and Justin Bieber are still number two this week um, with Stay. Kodak Black is still number three this week. And that's with Super Gremlin. Gail is still number four this week with ABCDEFU. So that's number four. And then it kind of we kind of start switching up. Justin Bieber comes up to number five this week with a ghost. We don't talk about Bruno. Move down to number six this week. And Kanto was losing his steam, you guys. After all this time, they're finally going down. We have Enemy by Imagine Dragons at number seven. Holding down the number seven spot is going up this week. Lil Nas X surprisingly is kind of increasing in popularity right now. He's has that song "That's What I Want" coming up to number eight. He's slowly but surely moving up. Um, and then we have number nine. Doja Cat is moving up with Woman, so she's getting popular. I guess maybe because of all that stuff that happened with her. Maybe people are trying to listen to her music and share her up so she can still chart. And then we have Miss Billboard herself, 2022, is at number 10. So she's going down, you all. She dropped three points. Adele with Easy On Me. Finally down to number 10. So we have a few honorable mentions, I guess. Lotto has moved up to with Big Energy to number 11, which... You know, a lot of people will speculate that that's because of the samples in her song. But that song is not that great to me. The video is not that great. None of her other songs are really doing anything. So this is just interesting. Um, doesn't look like her album is charting this week on the album charts. Um, I know she just dropped her album. But I don't think it will come out to next week. Um, but that's it. So that's pretty much it, you guys, um, as far as our honorable mentions for the week and the last thing i want to say who is another honorable mention but they're kind of beyond the honorable mention because they're topping the charts but who is the stray kids you guys who is the stray kids are they here to replace bts because it's like this group of like six asian boys i mean i don't know what their asian descent is if they're japanese if they're korean if they're taiwanese if they're chinese if they're, you know, um, Cantonese, I don't know what other nieces I could come up with, but I don't know which um, Asian country they're from, you guys. So, who is the Stray Kids? Somebody tell me about that, because they came in, just entered the charts at number one, like the um, album charts, and they're number one on the artist charts. They're just entering. They're brand new and topping the charts. So, this just seems weird, you guys. What's going on with that? What do you guys think about the Stray Kids? Has anybody heard them? I need somebody to give me a report on what's going on with the Stray Kids because I'm trying to figure out what is all this. Um, you know, I actually might even, you know, go ahead and say that, you know, I actually mentioned it in the title, like, who are the Stray Kids? But I might have to do an all call and just figure out 
who they are, you guys. So let me know what you all think about the charts in the comments. Let me know if this is reflecting in real time what you guys are noticing. Y'all tell me. Let me know if this is what you guys are experiencing. Let me know if the charts are accurate as far as what you're hearing out here in these streets. Let me know in the comments. All right, guys. So next up, we're going to move on to our world news segment. What's going on around the world, you guys? What's going on around here in the United States of America? What's happening around these parts, you guys? So I have a couple of pieces of interesting world news to bring you. One locally here in the U.S. and one abroad. But um, I'll say first that my U.S. story is kind of a follow-up and an update to just some things because I've spoken on this particular subject before and um, I might as well tell you all what, what the subject is but it's talking about the homeless I've reported on this before in both Los Angeles and, and um, New York I've also seen many articles about the homelessness in many states many um, states all over the US Central America all over so like homelessness is truly an epidemic you guys um, in the US so I'm going to bring you all a new article and update on something particular. So let's get into this first article for our U.S. news within our world news segment. New York City planning to remove homeless encampments from the street. New York City officials are planning to remove makeshift shelters set up by homeless people on city streets, mirroring similar efforts in other liberal metropolises that had previously tolerated the encampments. Mayor Eric Adams disclosed the initiative in an interview with the New York Times on Friday, but provided few details. It comes from a month after he announced a push to remove homeless people from the city's sprawling subway systems in response to the assaults and other aggressive behavior. We're going to rid the encampments off our streets and we're going to place people in healthy living conditions with wraparound services. He told the Times, I'm telling my city agencies to do an analysis block by block, district by district, identify where the encampments are, then execute a plan to give service to the people who are in the encampments, then to dismantle those encampments. So y'all, they kind of go on and on in the article. It's just, this is just interesting to me, you guys. Like, my question is, are they really going to offer services and a healthy living condition for these people? I don't know. Like, I haven't been to New York in a while, you guys. I'm not, that's not one of my favorite places to go. They're a little bit too chilly for me sometimes, even though they get warm in the summer. But who wants to be in New York in the summertime? Like, it's like, what? But anyways, but I don't know if the homeless situation is as bad as it is in LA, because it's like, them people not going nowhere out there. Like, it's, it's just, it's no getting rid of it. But um, I just think this is interesting, you guys. I'm just wondering if they're really going to do that. I mean, dismantle it by all means if you're going to give people proper homes. Because, you know, people, obviously this is a public health issue and a city issue at this point. That people are in these situations by whatever means, whether it was drugs, whether it was, you know, them losing their job, whatever their case may have been that led them to that I think it's a city, it's a municipal issue, and they do everything else. They give out traffic tickets, so they might as well actually give these homeless people places to go instead of just having people um, and actual services instead of just spending all their money to hire people to go into the courts to basically sue the citizens of the local municipality. So, you know, that's just something that I'm thinking, you guys. So, do y'all think this is really going to happen? Do you think it's going to be real services rendered to the homeless in New York, you guys? Or do you think Mayor Eric Addicts is bluffing? I don't know, you guys. I'm going to have to continue watching this because he's been on one when it comes to this. So, you guys let me know what you think about all this in the comments. And our last piece of world news comes out. Y'all motherland. Y'all motherland of Africa. Ethiopia, Ethiopia is urged to uphold press freedom and release reporter. So what they got going on in Ethiopia, y'all? Let's see. So I don't know why this actually comes from a South African, Cape Town, South African reporter. They're reporting all the way about Ethiopia. So that's interesting. But anyway, let's check out the article. So from what they know in South Africa about Ethiopia, 
Ethiopia is being urged to uphold its international commitments to freedoms of expression and the press by releasing journalists it has imprisoned. Two lawmakers in the U.S. Congress, Rep. Adams Schiff of California and Mary Gates Scanline of Pennsylvania, have joined press freedom advocates in calling for the immediate release of journalist Amir Aman Kiyaro, who had been held for four months without charge. Kiyaro's continued detention is due to be reviewed in court Tuesday when the state must formally charge him or release him, according to the judge in the case. Ethiopia, which has been adopted, I mean, excuse me, which has adopted the UN's Universal Declaration of Human Rights and as a member of the African Union, should be obliged to release Kiaro and other journalists, according to Shift and Scanline. So, you guys, they over there jelling people up in Ethiopia for, I guess, I wonder what, them, nobody's talking about what he released. What did he say that, or what did he do that, you know, or did he, is he actually a real criminal? Like, what? what's the deal, you guys? Like, what's going on? Like, did he do something and they wanted to retaliate against him? Or is he a real criminal? For me, it's just not enough information on this story. I know I didn't read the whole entire article, you guys, but they're not saying nothing in the article. I read all the important parts. And they're basically harping on the U.S. senators, like, just um, crying and begging for them to do stuff. So, like, you know. They need to be worried about what we got going on over here in the United States instead of worrying about what's going on in Ethiopia and the UN. So, you know, y'all are gelling people here for releasing certain information. So, what what's really going on in the world, you guys? This is just interesting. But, you know, shouts out to my brother. Like, I hope you was, you know, doing something noble and that you are released. But this, this you know, we all have gone through things, including myself dealing with these legal systems and these charges and stuff like that so just stay stay strong and just get through it my brother i pray the best for you if that is what the universe has for you so you know what you guys think about that what y'all think about the happenings in ethiopia let me know if y'all think they're chilling um they're tripping about this or if you know anything else about this situation in Ethiopia, like what led him to this situation. So we're gonna go ahead and move on to our next section, you guys. All right, guys. So next up on this new episode of Oba Omi Says, we have our spiritual perspective section. We're going to get into a couple of things in spiritual perspectives. So first up, we have our meme analysis. So you guys, I got some interesting quote memes that um, I think are very interesting. I've been seeing them several times. I've seen all of them a few times. So I just wanted to share them with you all and see what you guys think about these particular quotes. And let's see what's up with them. So first and foremost, the first quote we have is, let's normalize asking questions for clarity instead of moving based off the stories you created in your mind, which may or may not be true. Clarity preserves relationships. You know what, you guys? I'm sure all of us can speak to, you know, this, like, what is it with this, this, I think it's, it is definitely a dichotomy of masculine and feminine or man and woman in most instances, but some people are just conversationalists and some people are just like non-conversational. Like it's a spectrum um, where one people are on one type of person is on one side and one type of person is on another side. People aren't into talking things out and asking questions for clarity. And instead people just assume they make stories up in their mind. And, you know, and those things may or may not be true, but they still do it. So if people were clear and were able, had the aptitude and the capacity to have conversations, you know, a lot of things could be smoothed over so much more. A lot of understandings can be had. A lot of agreements can be came to and resolved. But, you know, instead... You know, we do the things that we do. So, what do you guys think? Do you think normalizing um, questions for clarity instead of moving based on the stories you've created in your mind, which may or may not be true, 
Do you think that's a form of clarity preserving relationships or that can be a form of clarity preserving relationships? I agree with this, you guys. I don't know how y'all feel, but let me know what you feel about this particular quote meme in the comments. Up next, we have a different quote meme. So let's see what this one says. It says, if you know your energy is addictive, learn how to be responsible with who you share yourself with. Oh my goodness, you guys. You know, this is kind of a, um, <laughs> this is just an interesting quote meme because kind of a double-edged sword. Like, I can see a lot of people, like, using this to basically, like, you know, presume or assume that somebody is narcissistic and on one end of the spectrum. And I can see real narcissists using something like this as a form of logic and rationale, which might not particularly apply to them. However, there are some people like, you know, one thing I can attest that my energy has definitely been addictive. And personally, I that's why I don't share my energy with a lot of people. I used to be, you know, one to like, make new friends and all this stuff. And not to say that I can't make a new friend, but it's just I'm way more selective because a lot of people become attracted to my energy and, you know, they they want to be around it. And it's not, I'm not saying that I am the best at anything or whatever or ranked over anybody, but the energy, the vibration that I give off is that of one of peace and comfort. And people really enjoy that from my just aura, even just me being around, whether I'm talking me just being around being who I am like people they can become addicted to just my energy being in their space so I'm sure many of you out there can relate to this I know I'm not the only one but you know some of you you all know how people just gravitate towards you just like a um a, um fly to a glow stick or something so you know let me know what y'all think about this in the comments do you think people have addictive energy number one and if they do, do you think they should learn to be responsible with who they share themselves with? Because I definitely think they should. Let me know what you guys think about this quote me in the comments. And last but not least, this is an interesting one. And no offense to any of my um, um, 70s babies and on up, like Generation X babies and on up, um, to the older generations. Don't be offended by this next one. But this one says... You cannot raise your children the way your parents raised you because your parents raised you for a world that no longer exists. You know, I really wholeheartedly agree with this. I will say, though, that, you know, some things we as a species have kind of evolved from, but, you know... At the same time, we're living out, you know, ancestral traumas in our epigenetic memory. Y'all look that word up. Epigenetic. Epigenetic. Sound it out, spell it, look it up. But we carry certain memories in our genes, you know, that we just do certain things. And, you know, we, all of us, were working through these types of things. But we just have to remember that certain things we need to pass that are very relevant to the world we're going into. And certain things should be left behind. So, like, you know, I'm not saying the way that our parents raised us or the, their parents raised them or whatever is a wrong way. I'm just saying that it only applied to that age. So you have to try to find ways to, you know, to advance and evolve your bloodline too. Like, why would you want to do something, one, that applies to an old world? Secondly, that your parents did to you, especially as you become older and realize that your parents, you know, nobody had a guide to parenting. Everybody was doing the best that they can. So like, everybody deserves and has the right to do parenthood as they see fit like in my personal opinion but you know i would say you know i think it's a better way to think that you know to raise your children for the world that is and not the world that was i think that's just a better better way to look at things because the world is changing and it's evolving and if we're not evolving with it what are we doing y'all so you cannot raise your children the way your parents raised you because your parents raised you for a world that no longer exists. Do you guys agree or do you not? Let me know how you feel about this meme and all the quote memes in the comments. All right, you guys, getting to our final part of spiritual perspectives, we're going to go ahead and do 
our astrology reading for today. And in the spirit of Aries season, we're going to make this a new starting point for us here at Obaomi Says. So as I tell you guys a lot, many of the outer planets don't move, especially past Jupiter, Jupiter and beyond. They move very slowly. So I'm not going to always report on these planets. So I'm going to forever from here on out, if well for now until any of the planets past Jupiter, well really past Venus or Mars change, or especially past Jupiter, I'm going to tell everybody to refer back to episode 12 to listen to the outer planets to see what the energy is. And this energy will still be applying to the day until I announce that there's a new formation in the outer planets. So keep that in mind. This is the new reference when I tell people to refer back to a reading, particularly for the outer planets of Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. Refer back to this particular episode, episode 12. And we're going to go ahead and get into this in the spirit of Aries season, starting new beginnings, all that good energy. So we're going to go ahead and talk about what's going on, you guys. So let's go ahead and say where everything is right now before I really get into it. The sun is in Aries. The moon is in Aquarius. Mercury is in Aries. Venus is in Aquarius. Mars is in Aquarius. Jupiter is in Pisces. Saturn is in Aquarius. Uranus is in Taurus. Neptune is in Pisces. And Pluto is in Capricorn. So, as I said before, the planets beyond Jupiter have not moved in quite some time since I've been um, on this podcast. And they don't move that fast. It takes them months and years sometimes to move, especially the further out that you get. So just keep that in mind. I'll be telling people to refer to episode 12. So let's go ahead and get into this. So with the sun being in Aries, you guys, what does the sun represent? The sun represents your inner personal purpose, inner drive and energy, the source of will and self-motivation, sense of confidence, strength, individuality and creativity. So not only does that apply to your sun sign, that also applies to the energy that the sun emits in the time that it's in whatever constellation. So bear that in mind. The sun in Aries right now is representing, of course, the people who was born under the sun sign Aries. But it also has this effect because it's shining the light of Aries onto our world now. And we're experiencing these Aries situations when it comes to our sun energy as we're going forward and as we're going through Aries season. What are some tendencies of Aries right now to have a strong personality, to be of an entrepreneurial spirit, to be ambitious, to be self-willed, sometimes stubborn, stubborn, obstinate, and tenacious, but sometimes for a good cause. What are some weaknesses of Aries right now? So with the Aries energy coming through the sun, we're having a lot of nervousness, impulsiveness, wastefulness, provoking nature, restlessness, and changeability. So that's some of the interesting energies that we're dealing right now in our own inner purpose, personal purpose, our inner drive, because the sun is shining in Aries. So that's what's going on, you guys, with the sun being in Aries. And let's go ahead and move on to the moon energy. Now, the moon is in Aquarius. What does the moon represent? The moon represents how you express your purpose in everyday activities through your emotions, attitudes, habits, general moods, how you adapt to your environment, your mothering energy, your undercurrent, your subconscious. So right now, this applies to people who are born under moon Aquarius. This applies to you and the energy that we're getting. We're all getting on our undercurrent on our other way that we're expressing our purpose with the moon being in Aquarius. The moon moves very quickly. So we kind of feel moody a lot of times, you guys. That's part of the reason why the moon moves a lot. So moon in Aquarius means that you're going to be experiencing sociable energy. You're going to be acting very intelligent, but lucid in your undercurrent. You're going to feel that way in your undercurrent. You're going to have great sociability in your undercurrent. You're going to want to do those things. You're going to have many friends and reach out to many friends. You're going to be modern, original, inventive, and nonconformist, and just ready to bring in a new life. And this all deals with the mood that you're going to be in with the moon in Aquarius, you guys. 
some of the weaknesses we might have right now is we might be a bit too eccentric, a bit too sharp with our mood swings, and kind of bring complexities to our love life. So that's some of the interesting energy that's coming with the moon being in Aquarius. Mercury is in Aries, you guys. Mercury is in Aries. So what does Mercury represent? Mercury represents the concrete and conscious mind, the sign and how show how and where you communicate and assimilate the results of your relationship, reason, logic, and communication. So a lot of this has to do with how you guys think and how you guys project that out to the world, the Mercury energy. So with Mercury being in Aries, it's shining a lot of Aryan light on us. So let's see how what that means for our communication, you guys. Arguments, disputes, discusses, answers back. Lively mind with which quickly understands a given situation. Very resourceful and capable. So the disputes and the discussing, discussings and the arguings and all those things aren't particularly negative, but they are something to be mindful of. As far as a weakness with our communication and our conscious mind with Mercury and Aries is impetuousness, hot-headedness, being petulant or impatient and hasty, which causes problems due to lack of foresight before acting. So that's what's going on with a lot of us in our mind and in the way that we're communicating right, guys, right now, guys, is our Mercury and Aries. So be mindful of that. We're moving through a lot of fire energy right now and a lot of air energy with all these Aquarius as well. So be mindful of that as we're moving forward, you guys. we got a lot of projecting masculine energy right now coming through. Venus represents your capacity to love and your value. The sign shows your attitude and needs and love. So it shows what you will attract, what you are most likely to attract to yourself and refinement, money gain, and loss. So it has to do with attraction via love and via all the things that you attract to yourself. So that's the biggest thing going on right now with Mercury being in Aries, I mean, excuse me, with Venus being in Aquarius right now and what the Venus energy represents. So with Venus being in Aquarius, you know, people will like very flowerly and flashy language. They'll be very sensitive and detest anything vulgar when it comes to the things they attract. Um, they appreciate independence and love right now with the Aquarian energy fly flying through Venus right now, but idealizes and embellishes it. Likes to please and will do whatever necessary for this. While being freight frank, they are not always faithful with the Venus and Aquarius energy that we have going on right now. And some of the weaknesses that we have is unfaithful because they like love, they like above all to please and will follow through to the end of any adventure that arises. Does not like barriers, likes liberty of action, and does not like to account to anyone. So, you know, when it comes to the things that we're attracting to ourselves, we're kind of exuding a lot of that Aquarian energy. So we have to balance that out as well, you guys, with some of our outer planet water and earth energy. We got a lot of Aquarian energy. We also have that in Mars, you guys. Mars is in Aquarius. So what does our Mars represent, you guys? Mars represents courage and stability. Excuse me, courage and the ability to take action. Desire, nature, and aggressive drives. It shows how you go out after your values. So it shows your aggressive drives. And this particular planet is concretely where you show this type of energy, you guys. So with Mars being in Aquarius, you guys, these are the energies that we're exuding right now. There's a lot of aggressiveness and a social battle for freedom or independence or adventure but always linked to society. You know, people are liking adventure with the Mars and Aquarius light shining on us right now, you guys, wanting to be independent, but still having disturbances, changes, and upsets. So those are kind of the things that are going on right now. So um, that's what's going on right now with our Mars energy, guys. Now we're gonna go ahead and move on to Jupiter. What does Jupiter represent, you guys? And these, starting from Jupiter on, you guys, these are the planets that I always tell you to refer back to episode 12 in order to understand what's going on with this energy. 
So what does Jupiter represent, you guys? Personal expansion processes of your realm and horizons. This brings good luck and fortune to you. Optimism, confidence, and pride. So Jupiter is your house of personal expansion and good fortune, you guys. So right now with Jupiter and Pisces, we're all experiencing strength, tenderness, devotion, and a lot of charity and pity onto people right now with Jupiter and Pisces. So kind of one of the weaknesses is that we can let ourselves go and sometimes be a social parasite, you know, when it comes to the way we're moving when it comes to our horizons and our luck. So be mindful of that right now because Jupiter will be in Pisces for a while. So be mindful of the way you're moving with the things that you're trying to do as far as your personal expansion process and the realm of your horizons. Let's go ahead and move on to Saturn, you guys. Saturn represents where you learn to operate within limitations of society. So we're talking about your life cycles here. Responsibility and rules, fears, obstructions, and limitations. The fathering energy and the teacher. So you guys, Saturn right now is in Aquarius. So this is dealing a lot with our life cycles, a lot with how we're learning and growing and our repetitive nature sometimes. So right now, with Saturn in Aquarius, it's showing long-term study, even study of yourself. If family circumstances do not allow them, we'll teach ourselves right now when it comes to Saturn and Aquarius. Very serious and methodical and work when it comes to our life cycles, guys. We're very, really serious about that. The Saturn and Aquarius energy. Likes to visit the elderly. So we like to do those types of things with this type of energy. And other intellectuals who both enrich their minds. So sometimes with the Saturn and Aquarius energy, we can be prone to bad luck adversity and problems and disappointed hopes so you know when it comes to our life cycles we're going through that Aquarian energy so sometimes we have to experience the other side of it you guys so keep that in mind as we move forward Uranus Uranus is in Taurus you guys so what does Uranus represent it represents our inner individuality and uniqueness intuitive and creative expressed as inspiration or rebellion breakthrough of society structures to become independent and original so this is our individuality you guys our uranus energy so uranus is going to be in taurus for a while you guys so this is kind of the energy we'll be experiencing not only from people born under this planetary um, position but also the energy we'll be feeling in our uranus energy so we'll be feeling a little bit pig-headed and obstinate strong-willed but not easily intimidated so, you know, we're going to kind of be stubborn in a lot of ways, guys. But there's another side to that as well with the Taurian energy in Uranus. So keep that in mind. This is going to be an energy going on for a while with people's personalities and their individuality. Keep that in mind. And next thing we have, our last two planets, we have Neptune. First off, our Neptune is in Pisces right now. So Neptune represents where your spiritual vision your creative imagination and psychic ability lead you beyond materiality. So beyond things that are material, you guys. Glamour and illusion are negative. Your highest idealism. Your highest idealism, you guys. So we seek to be in a very clear state of spiritual understanding under the Neptune energy, which is interesting because Neptune is in Pisces. So when it comes to this thing, our spiritual vision and our creative imagination, you guys, we're going to like to work alone with our Neptune and Pisces energy. We're going to appreciate solitude a lot. So um, Pisces is um, actually Neptune. That's part of their planetary energy. Neptune comes from the um, energy of Pisces. So we'll be experiencing kind of a very strong Piscean energy in our spirituality for a while now, you guys, as Neptune is in Pisces. So keep that in mind. And last but not least, we have Pluto. And Pluto represents, you guys, our compulsive force, the compulsive forces around us and the unconscious nature that brings about great transformations. The ability to organize and deal with society. 
So it's our power. And it's also a generational sign. So this is represents a large undercurrent for an energy that's going to be going on with a lot of us. So keep this in mind. So with Pluto and Capricorn, it speaks of bringing success. So this will be the generation, will be the time of an undercurrent of achieving success and greatness. The light side of the Capricorn energy is truly in effect right now as Pluto shines in the light of Capricorn, you guys. So keep that in mind. This is going to be something that we deal with kind of overall, especially with children being born under this sign. Um, kind of an undercurrent on the bright and dark of the Capricorn energy. But that's what's going on, you guys, as far as with our Zodiac chart for this week. So, um, we're almost here to the new moon, you guys, which will be on the 1st. We're talking about the moon cycle now, you guys. Of course, you know, we had the full moon around the 18th, you guys. We're going into our waning moon and where everybody should be doing cool down rituals, things to cool their energy, cool their spirit down. And we're moving over into our new moon phase where we're starting our energy over and just trying to gather new life, a new sentiment for things and just upping our energy, you guys. So the new moon is on the first. So prepare yourself for whatever energy you'll be building up through the new moon energy and prepare to put it out in the universe, you guys. So I will, as I said earlier in this section, will be forever referring to episode 12 until the outer planets of Jupiter through Pluto. So that's Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. I'll be telling you all to refer to episode 12 to get a, a internal and detailed reading as to what's going on with the outer planets. And then we're going to be doing the inner planets for the astrology reports until the outer planets begin to move. So keep that in mind, you guys, and go forward and do likewise with all this. All right, guys, so we are here at the episode topic for today. So today is going to be the kickoff of our Astrology 101 series, where in several of the topics that come up throughout the episodes, I'll, you know, be having an Astrology 101 discussion course just explaining some of the things that I know about astrology for those that are interested in it um so that's what today's topic is going to be about as its title in the header it is where astrology 101 and we're talking about the modes the modes of the astrological signs so just I've said this before but just for people to know I do read in Placidus and as far as when it comes to astrology and I do birth charts in Placidus. So if you do not agree with the Placidus system, which is the one that kind of general mainstream westernized astrology follows, you might not want to listen to this because you might not agree with some of the things that I'm saying. But for people that, you know, just kind of read horoscopes or just every now and then know something about their sign or their sun signs and all that stuff, you know, this might be for you because you might relate to it a lot more. So that's the first disclaimer that I'll put out, but we'll go ahead and get straight into our topic on modes, you guys. So, and I'm saying the word modes, M-O-D-E-S, not M-O-L-D-S or anything like that. Modes, as in like the type of mode you're in. So, there, um, the, what do the modes represent? What do the modes represent? So I'll give you a short definition of what it is and I'll kind of expand upon it and go even deeper in just a second. So let's kind of do, we're going to start at the beginning of this and we're going to take it a little nice and easy. So, so if I had to boil the modes down to just a quick elevator pitch for astrology, what would I say about the modes just as a quick takeaway for you guys? So the modes represents the three qualities of life. You know, people also call the modes the quadruplicities because there's four in each mode. So it's a kind of mixing the triplicities and the quadruplicities. So that word is talking about the four signs of each three modes. So, you know, that's kind of how it is going. So if I was to give a baseline, so the mode, the three modes are the cardinal mode, the fixed mode, and the mutable mode. So if I was to give a baseline definition of what the cardinal mode is, and I'll go deeper into this, we'll take it in multiple um, ways. The first baseline I would say 
you know, the cardinal sign initiates, sets the tone for the season. So it's known as dynamic. The fixed signs, they carry through the purpose of a season. So they are persevering. And the mutable signs conclude and assimilate the season. So they are adaptable. So let's go a little bit deeper into it. One step deeper into it. So the modality or mode of a given sign refers to its position in the season it is found in. Each of the four elements manifests in three modalities, cardinal, fixed, and mutable, as I just said. Since each modality comprehends four signs, they are also quadruplicities, as I said. For example, the sign Aries is found in the first month of the spring in the Western Hemisphere, so practitioners of astrology describe it as having a cardinal modality. The combination of elements and modality provide the signs with their unique characterization. For instance, Capricorn is the cardinal earth sign, impressing its association with action, cardinal modality in the material world of earth element. So, as I said, like kind of getting more into that. So once again, our takeaway from that is that the cardinal is still action, dynamic, initiative, and has great force. The fixed modality is resistant to change, but with great willpower and is very inflexible. And the mutable signs are adaptable, flexible, and very resourceful. So this is very important because, you know, how many times do we hear people talk about, oh, I'm this or I'm that, I'm an Aries or I'm a Taurus or I'm a Gemini or I'm a Scorpio or whatever you want to say that you are, you know, but do you really understand the the deeper things about your sign when it relates to the elementals of what's going on when we we mention these names and these titles because you know of course it's something nice to discuss but there's also a deeper science behind it that's one of the things is because that deeper science is lost many people quote unquote don't believe in astrology but you can't not believe in what's over your head but I mean I, mean, I guess you can not believe in it but you know these things have been studied for years and eons before we were ever thought about being in existence so you know just putting that out there so you know this is something very important to know to understand yourself in different ways as well it helps you understand yourself so when you know more about your mode and more about it teaches you more about your sign so let's go ahead and really get into the signs and the modes like which mode and signs correlate with each other so let's start off at the top. What are the cardinal signs? So just small, long story short, the cardinal signs are Aries, Cancer, Libra, and Capricorn. And I'll get more into those. But as you can recognize, this will be a pattern. You'll see one fire sign, one water sign, one air sign, and one earth sign in each mode. So it's going to be four signs in each mode. So that's why it's three modes and three times four for the four signs in each of the three modes equals 12. So that gives you all 12 of the zodiac signs. So you can know the modes of the zodiac. So just keep that in mind. So those are the ones for cardinal. We have Aries for fire, Cancer for water, Libra for, for air, and Capricorn for earth. So cardinal signs are initiators. They are energetic, dynamic, proactive, and unafraid to try new things. And we're talking about all these signs, you guys. A preponderance of cardinal signs in a chart indicates that a person who is always in go mode, but they don't always take the rest they need. This can cost them in the long run. So interesting things for cardinal signs. The word cardinal means first. The sun's entry into each cardinal sign takes place at the equinoxes and solstices. The first month of any season brings the starting vibe of the cardinal sign. The first day in the sun, um, the first day the sun is in Aries is the first day of spring in the northern hemisphere. The sign Cancer is the beginning of summer. The first day in Libra marks the beginning of fall. The Capricorn ingress hails the arrival of winter. So let's go a little bit deeper into the signs, you guys. Aries is the cardinal sign of fire, an idealistic, straight shooter who moves fast and likes to be first. So Cancer is the cardinal sign of water, 
Cancer represents motherhood, the drive to feed, nurture, and care for others. So they are the first in that type of energy in the water world. Libra is the cardinal air sign. Libra represents one-on-one -on -one relationships, the basis of communication and relating. So it's helms the air energy. It's the top of it, like the entry point of it. And Capricorn is the cardinal earth sign. Ambitious, driven to achieve, and gain status. So that's kind of what helms the earth signs in the cardinal position. So this is a lot of information about the cardinal signs. So understand this if you are Aries, Cancer, Libra, or Capricorn, whatever elemental of the four elements that your sign is in, what those cardinal signs represent because there's an energy that you share amongst those other signs, but also an energy that kind of rides that vibration through your element as well, whatever your respective element is for your sign. So what are the fixed signs? The fixed signs are Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and Aquarius. Signs on the fixed cross are persistent, stable, and resistant to change. The fixed quality is strong and relentless. It is a blessing at times. Fixed signs are reliable and determined. They do not give up easily, but the unwillingness to change can also mean missing out on opportunities and getting stuck in ruts. The fixed sign represents the second month of each season. The season is well underway by the time the sun reaches a fixed sign. The season has really set in, if you will. So this represents the time of the season where it's fixed, like it's not changing, like the middle of the summer, the middle of the winter, the middle of each season represents the fixed position of, of where these signs lie at on the zodiac wheel as well. So let's talk about the different signs. We have Taurus as the fixed earth sign, so it's stubborn and flexible and reliable. Leo is the fixed fire sign and is fixed in its idealism and creativity, loyal, proud, and steadfast. The Scorpio is the fixed water sign, so it's powerful and determined and jealous and controlling. Scorpio is unstoppable when they really want something. Yes, fixed energy. And Aquarius is the fixed air sign. Aquarius has fixed ideas and fixed opinions. It can be hard for them to take direction from others because they already know everything. They're fixed in that energy, right, Aquarians? <laughs> so, yeah, so that's something interesting to take into account when you're dealing with the fixed signs that these, these no matter your element, you all kind of share that perspective of kind of being more rigid and a lot of times and more... Um, straightforward and inflexible in the way that your consciousness or your psyche forms things or does things. So keep that in mind for all the Tauruses, Leo, Scorpios, and Aquarius that you all are in the fixed modality. And last but not least of the modes, we have what are mutable signs. So the mutable signs are Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius, and Pisces. Each sign on the mutable cross has a flexible, changeable, adaptable, and suggestible nature. The mutable quality goes with the flow better than other signs. The mutable signs are good with the relationships and the details of day-to-day -day life. Mutable signs are very good at multitasking, doing many things at once, but they also tend to struggle with distractions. They may scatter their energies. They may lack the focus to move decisively towards a goal. When a chart has a preponderance of mutable signs, the person tends to have excess nervous energy. This nervous energy makes it difficult for the person to settle down. The sun's passage through a mutable sign represents the final month of any season. Late summer, for example, when the leaves begin to fall and the weather becomes more changeable as we begin to slide into the next season. Mutable signs pick up the quality of these seasonal changes, seasons of changes. So the mutable sign, the mutable signs represent the time of the season, guys, where, you know, it can kind of, is it's shifting into another one, but it's experiencing the energy of both seasons. That's why it's mutable and is, you know, very flexible in a lot of ways. So let's talk about the mutable signs. Gemini, the mutable air sign, their mental flexibility that gives them intelligence and ability to grasp new ideas and handle a lot of information. 
Virgo, the mutable earth sign. Virgo is the ultimate multitasker. Virgos are helpful, versatile, and attentive to the details. Sagittarius, the mutable fire sign. Sagittarius has a talent for seeing the big picture in any situation. Good with philosophy, good at inspiring others. And last but not least, we have Pisces, which is the mutable water sign. Pisces is flexible on the emotional level. Their impressionability makes them so sensitive that they often feel other people's feelings. So, you know, in the mutable side, you guys are very adaptable to a lot of different things, especially when it comes to your elemental. And, you know, um, these are things that you should know about your sign because you all share this in common with each other. So bear in mind with any whatever position you know, your um your sun sign is in. That's one aspect, but all the position, all the modes that each sign that you have, especially in your your very earlier planets, like you know, your um closer planets, the first five, you know, the sun, Mercury, the moon, Mars and Venus, like all those planets, they have a very significant part of your psyche. So just remember that you guys as um, we move forward remember that um you know your sign plays a lot all the signs they play a lot into the energy that you have but also the mode of the sign so you know if your venus is in you know a mutable mode but your sun sign the main energy that you have is in a fixed mode like, you know, in your love life, depending upon your elemental sign, if it's mutable, then you might be a little bit different when it comes to your love and attraction than, it is, than you are in your main consciousness of how most people perceive you as. So that's just something to keep in mind as we move forward, you guys, that the sign, it's, it's a lot more about the signs we have to go to because the next one I'm going to do is the elements when I do another astrology one-on-one, but I wanted to introduce the most to you guys. And I wanted you to take a look into them and know what cardinal, what fixed, and what mutable mean. And kind of begin to understand that and bring that into your psyche when it relates to your particular sun sign or whatever the signs may appear in your chart. So you can have a deeper understanding as to what this actually is, you guys. So, you know, that's this is what we're going to talk about today is so many astrological topics. I'm going to eventually have some guests on the show to talk about astrology, some real astrologers and people that study astrology to give us even a more deeper perspective on a lot of these things as well. So keep that in mind, you guys. But this is one of the biggest topics that I want to go over for today is the modes of astrology so we can begin to start just understanding and breaking down our persona our psyche our consciousness even more by understanding the deeper things behind the elementals and the seasons of our signs and the modes play a very big picture into the energy of your sign or you understanding the energy of your sign if you will you guys so i hope you all learned a little something new today in our episode topic and you know i'm going to be bringing more astrology one-on-ones and you know in this part of the episode we're going to talk about a lot of different things so just keep that in mind as we move forward you guys so i hope you guys learn something and we're going to go ahead and move forward with the next segment of today's episode all right everybody and for our last section of the day we have our energy reading section of the day and of course we'll be reading from the cards for inner ascension created by my soul sister sunny patterson if you are interested in getting a card deck of these affirmation cards to see what the spirit guides and the universe is telling you feel free to follow the link in my description so that you can purchase your very own deck of the cards for inner ascension created by Sonny Patterson. So let's go ahead and get straight into the energy reading for today, you guys. This last one for the month of March. This last one, not quite for the Aries season, but definitely for the month of March. So today, um, when I shuffled the deck, actually three cards fell out. So I felt like the spirit guides had all kinds of messages going on today that was coming through so i just went ahead and decided to share all three of the cards with you all that fell out from the spirit guides the first one says i complete what i start 
I think that's very important for people to know right now because oftentimes we start on things and we don't complete those things and we have to remember we're not proving you know a lot of people say I'm only competing with myself or I'm only doing whatever but the universe itself measures everything everything is an equation so the more that you sink into not completing what you start the more you fall out of sync with the highest elevation of who you could possibly become so practicing on the aspect of i complete what i start is definitely an energy needed right now for everyone that's listening to this so make sure you're completing what you're starting first biggest message second one is i am connected and engaging for some people who feel that they are out of the loop out of the energy feel like people aren't noticing them or paying attention to them or even not acknowledging the work that they do this is one thing that i i'm seeing that the spirit guys are trying to connect to you all i am connected and engaging sometimes we disconnect ourselves because we think that we have to do things to be engaging but just being who we are and just being in a natural state of being and letting the energy ebb and flow as it naturally does connects you and engages you. So for all those out there, this message is for some people that might feel like they're trying too hard or that they really feel underappreciated. Remember right now that you are connected and engaging. And our last card reading that came through today is I have the power to change how I respond to disappointment and disagreements. Now, this is a very powerful statement. I have the power to change how I respond to disappointment and disagreements. So, you know, a lot of times, you guys, we meet disappointments with a certain energy, like we lose faith and whatever the situation may be. Sometimes it's people. In some disagreements, we decide that there's nothing that will end positively of it but you know one of the biggest things that we forget is that we have the power to change how we respond to these things you know everything is just a continuous wave in this universe the energy goes up the wave and down the wave you know so you have to be able to ride the waves of the universe one thing but in the riding of the waves you realize that you have the power to change how you respond to disappointment you don't have to ride that way the same way every time um you have the power to change how you respond to disagreements you don't have to react the way you do anytime there's a disagreement we have the power to change the way that we go about doing things that we plan things we can always take an internal look at ourselves when we're at a disappointment or a disagreement we just have a lot of things that we could do and we can't forget about the power that we have to change our responses in disappointments and disagreements. So I hope everybody is adhering to these messages that came because it's a lot that applies for different people that are listening right now. So the first one is I complete what I start. The second one is I am connected and engaging. And the third one is I have the power to change how I respond to disappointments and disagreements. So you guys go forward, take these words and do likewise. All right, guys. Well, this was a nice episode of Oba Omi Says. We got through a lot of things. We have our definitive astrology for the outer planets for this episode, episode 12 that I'll be referring to in the future. We talked about a lot of good things with astrology today with the topic. Had some interesting news today, you guys. So we had a good time today. I don't know about you guys, but I definitely had a good time. But I hope you guys had a good time too. And I just pray that you guys will continue to just move forward. And we had a lot of beautiful messages come from the ancestors. We're definitely going to get into some more things next week when we do our monthly Mary de Lagoon for the month of April. So just keep all these things in mind, you guys, as we move forward. Have a blessed and prosperous week. Definitely take the messages and the things that you learn from this episode and apply it to your life so that you continue to go and grow into a higher evolved version of yourself. And may you guys just continue to have just blessings, continue to manifest your destiny, and continue to just evolve and elevate as high as you can go in this lifetime. So until I talk to you guys again, Oba Omi over and out.